We've been told a few things that it could possibly be, all of which are a form of heart failure. It could throw his heart into like an unbeating pattern and cause sudden death. I feel like my whole life thinking has changed. Thinking about things I don't want to say, I don't want to put into the universe. We're still going to do those things. I don't even care if we don't do those things. I could <laughs> sit on this couch forever as long as you're with me. Welcome to today's welcome, vlog. Welcome, welcome. It is going to be a little bit different than what the traditional vlog is because we need to catch you guys up on the last two weeks of our living awesomeness. Because we're, we're we're choosing to be we're choosing to be positive. And, oh, we are. And, yeah. oh. Um, Hold on. Should we start be again? A positive light into this world. It's true. And true. it's been really difficult. So we can do hard things. I will forever look back at this week as a humble turning point in my existence. Let's start like probably end of February. He just starts feeling not great. Yeah, just feeling like I was not right. Um, working out was like a really big trial like a really big uh factor in everything yes and you're and he's in good shape and he's been working out consistently yeah. five six days a week for like a year so least, for it to uh, all sudden go oh yeah i mean he's always been in good shape but i'm saying like very consistent yeah and, and so then it was like there's something wrong like i know there's something wrong i tell michelle like i feel like there's something wrong and we decided to uh, just get a physical, right? So we don't really know where to start. Yeah, I was just like, oh, I'll just go in, get a physical, get you know, tell them that I've been feeling like just short of breath, just feeling tired, exhausted, and uh, like going up the stairs was a, a huge deal to me, you know. So then I knew that there was something wrong. Like I, I was not out of shape, so like going up the stairs was not ever a burden. Like I right. would run up the stairs and be just fine without like even. Right. Taking a breath, really. Two months ago, this guy was doing burning like we compare our things. He burned 800 calories in a 60 minute workout. Like he pushes himself. Yeah. You always have. Yeah. yeah. So that was like. So it was really dear. It was really weird to see like and to feel that difference in in you know what was going on. Right. So. So we make an appointment. Make an appointment. He um, goes on his own because I at this point still think he's kind of just being a wuss from when yeah. we were sick. I would have gone if I had had any <laughs> inkling our lives would be changing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I went in and talked with the doctor. I was like, maybe it's testosterone. Like, maybe I'm just not, you know, I'm getting older, right? Um, and just not feeling. I'm 33. Well, I'm saying I'm just for old. reference, like yeah. some of you are probably new to our channel, seeing this yeah. video for the first time. 33, yeah. healthy. Which, which, yeah. I mean. I don't no think I've ever other. really been this healthy, ever. Uh, so like going in, the doctor was like, you're 33 and you feel these things, you know, like this is <clears> not normal. So he ran a couple tests. We, he's like, all right, let's do an EKG. Uh, he hooks me up to the machine. Um, I start having the tests and he, you know, the EKG is kind of an older school type of machine. It's kind of caveman technology. It, it really like is. The oldest heart stuff, right? Yeah. So he, you know, it like prints off the little piece of paper and stuff. He rips it off and and starts looking at it. He's like, huh, that, that's weird. Like, not normal. And so he comes over and he shows me everything that, you know, on the EKG. So it's got like a normal up or like a spike. And then and normally it should go back down and level off and then a normal spike and then level off. But mine was like spike, come down, spike up, come down, level off, little spikes, spike up, you know, and it was the same, same style throughout the whole EKG. He's like, okay, you, we need to have more tests done, like stat. He sent me up to the hospital with a uh, blood work order, which needed to be done like now. He and put so stat on them. He so put stat on them. And they have me call him if I hadn't heard back from him or the hospital within an hour. 
So the timer starts and I leave the, uh, the doctor's office. I call Michelle and I'm like, I have really no idea what to expect, what's going on here. Yeah. And I'm sure you were freaking out. Um, but and we, it and was I like a was crazy too. day. Yeah, it was a crazy day. I had multiple calls that I had missed uh, for work because of all of this. Like I wasn't expecting to be at the doctor for this long and to go up to the hospital. I was watching multiple, multiple That's friends' right. kids. Like it was, right. it was a crazy day. Um, so I go up to the hospital, tell them what's going on. They get, get me checked in and they take some blood. They only did like six, six Only. or seven. That will be the, relevant later on. Six or seven of the little tubes um, and sent me on my way. And I called Michelle on the way home, you know, tell her everything's going to be okay. Like, we're going to figure this out. It's not a big deal. Okay, Next. so then they call and they say, everything's fine. We need to do more tests. So we're setting you up with the stress test a week later. So yeah. this is where we're at, we're at at this point. We think he's dodged a bullet because they're like, that can be a sign of infection. So it's something to do with a T wave, but it's basically his heart beating irregularly. And it can be caused, it sounds like, by infection. And so he rushed us up there. And at the time we thought we dodged this bullet. Like, oh good, there's no infection. It sounds like that actually probably would have been the better fix. <laughs> yeah. Because if you had had an infection, we could have given you an antibiotic kind of You're thing done. and you would have been done. So then, Fast forward, they pull some strings to get us in early. We go in with this. Specialist um, is a, a heart failure, very cardiac, mm -hmm. a cardiologist. And we go into the the stress test. So this is like six days later. A couple days later, yeah. And it's like in a movie. There's like a, per, a doctor doing a <laughs> ultrasound. On your heart. Yeah. He's the, he has 10 different wires. For the EKG. Strapped to him. So they do a full heart. They did another EKG twice, mm -hmm. right? Or just once. An EKG, but then they did a ultrasound on your heart. Uh -huh. And then they hooked him up to all the monitors and did a stress test. And like, I mean, we've got people running the... Well, the stress test is <coughs> when, when I'm connected to, to the, the machine and then running on the treadmill as well well walking then running mm -hmm. <coughs> so you've got like five doctors in there it's like me a madhouse jd's running like it the, was weird and the doctors are like obviously like okay so could he have could he have had a stroke what did he say could he have had a blood clot that went south is what he says to me or north oh. or something like that and i was like yeah i don't i mean i uh sure I, but not. I, not that i know of right, right. like and then he'd be like, okay, flap over to the so-and-so and this and that and whatever. And I'm like, and then does he have a family history of this? And I'm like, I don't like, I did not prepare so for this. It was a lot of questions. And while I'm walking and running and huffing and puffing on this mm -hmm. treadmill, asking all these different questions, like, cause he was like, huh? Like looking at all my results, he was like, there's, this is weird. Right. And it was something that like kind of stumped him. Like he didn't really know what to say or what to like what questions to ask because it was just that it was that irregular so yeah we just tried to answer those questions as best we could while right. while i was on this treadmill and but it was a good sign that i was able to do the treadmill for that long <clears throat> so i walked for five jogged for another five and then pretty much ran Right. A jog. A I'm pretty sure it was, you did 13 minutes total and you got to a level five on like a, it started with a B, some kind of scale. That mm. Bruce, I think a Bruce scale? A Bruce scale? I don't know. Cause that's relative. If you know like heart stuff, if you're in this realm, like that means something. So that he could get to that was impressive and good. Yeah. And we'll keep that in our back pocket for hope as yeah. we move forward. Yeah. Um, so he... Or I'm just super tough. He does, just, yeah. So this sure. like 45 minute appointment turns into a four hour <laughs> appointment. He comes and I actually have a picture of the list of orders with two pages of orders from our doctor and everything's like this test because of heart failure, this test because of heart failure, like pages of 12 point font yeah. of all the things. So then like it turns into such a long thing because the nurse is like, I am put it, poured it in them all, but I've never seen anything like this. So I'm going to have a double 
person check it? And I'm like, what? what? So then I it takes him that. forever. She goes in and checks it, sends us down. The lab's like, I can't draw this much blood. He's like, literally, like, I can't take this much blood from you. And we're like, okay, well, how many, like, can you take? So he takes 21 vials of blood from Judy. Yeah. Why we're in there, the nurse comes down and is like, I really Please need these one. two. These two filled. And yeah. so the two she brought were last minute were genetic testing and she's like i think this is gonna the doctor really this thinks this is gonna be relevant we need to send this off which that was a moment that kind of like broke me a little bit yeah. there's been moments that broke me and that was one because it made me realize like this will affect my kids too yeah yeah and that if was really is that mm -hmm. right. and so that was like a hard time so they you know sent that away too and jay's just like he's fasting he just yeah. did a stress test. Just <laughs> takes it like a champ. They're just literally pulling vial after vial. 21 vials of blood. We go back up. The doctor talks to us and both of us are just like deer in the headlights. He leaves and the nurse is like, I know a lot of that doesn't make sense. Re-explains it. So at the time they had thought GD had elevated liver. Fun yeah. Elevated, elevated liver, liver functions. Uh, whatever. Numbers. And so they thought that maybe the left side of his heart wasn't working well. So then like two days later, we were back doing all these tests for um, for his kidneys for and his livers and, yeah. and ultrasounds. Like the Cold doctor water. checked everything. And as of right now, if we understand correctly from reading our own portal, because we haven't had that big meeting, that stuff actually looks okay. Yes. The yeah. issues are more with the right side of the heart, yeah. which I don't know. It, it, which isn't good. Once again, it's probably would have been better if it was those other things. Well, and we, I guess we didn't mention <clears> either, like what they found in the testing, right? That my, when they measured my heart, yeah, that's they important. measured it. In those original ultrasounds. With the stress test. Mm -hmm. And so they measured all the ventricles and all that. And the two top ventricles. No, atriums. Atriums. The bottom two are ventricles and the. That's right. Atriums were enlarged. And then my right ventricle going into my lungs was like double in size. Yeah. So the whole <coughs> right side is particular bad though. Yeah. Um, the left is like putting out almost like right below the amount of blood they want to put out. So they're not. The heart. Yeah. They want it to be at a 60 and it was at like a 55. 55%. So like. So it's pumping the blood to my body, but not at a perfect level. But but I don't think we're really worried about that. No. I don't know. I, we haven't had the doctor tell us yeah, that. Yeah. But it sounds like that's like close enough so to be okay. So maybe somebody knows. We've been told a few things that it could possibly be all of which are a form of heart failure. Um and so there was a couple days so we haven't really vlogged in like this week. We just kind of needed a little bit of time. Because to say that like Somewhere along those lines, I had to come with terms that like, no, they're not gonna be like, you have a virus, let's get this better. Or like, oh, it's just high blood pressure. It's like, we are now aware that like there's, I mean, we call it what it is, like you're in some type of heart failure, right? I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, is that, is that what you're feel like no, we're kind yes. of coming to terms with? Yeah, yeah. Which is like... And hoping for a miracle. Right. And it sounds like there's a lot of different... Um, like the word heart failure is maybe more scary than it needs to be. Like yeah. a lot of people can live to a good long life with heart failure. The problem with heart failure is like it can be a sudden thing. So those T waves that they saw at his EKG and then saw again in his stress test that's what's freaking everybody out because it'll th it could throw his heart into like an unbeaten pattern and cause sudden death basically is that uh -huh. i mean like it kills me to actually say all this out loud it's like putting together the pieces so that's what's freaking everybody out and what we have to figure out right um yeah. so on thursday we now have stuff to like and then on monday again he has a cardiac mi and we're trying to decide like how much of his heart is scar tissue and how much of it's enlarged from that. And there's just like a lot of, um, a lot. There, there's so much and so much we're trying to learn and that we don't understand. And even having like my aunt break it down for me, I'm like, 
still. I feel like an idiot because I don't even understand this, right? Like, I'm like, okay, I know she said this word, so now I have to go research what what is pulmonary hypertension. And it looks like like he for sure has that, right? Um, that's pretty much what the doctor left saying, like, well, you definitely have pulmonary hypertension, but like, why? Right. You know, stuff like that is like, okay, well, that's treatable, but like the side effects, like the sudden death, like how much of that isn't it? You know, how much of that? I don't know. So. <clears throat> There's been um, the last couple days of like, I feel like my whole life thinking has changed. And instead of like, when are we gonna build our dream house? When are we gonna do whatever? Like our next so. vacation and should we travel with our kids? I'm like, thinking about things I don't wanna say. I don't wanna put into the universe. We're still gonna do those things. I don't even care if we don't do those things. I could sit <laughs> on this couch forever as long as you're with me. This is what we're going through. Um, and it is difficult. Um, but I hope, I hope we share this in hopes, number one, for documenting for our purposes, right? But then also, this could be a help to somebody else that may have any issue like this that can reach out and find find this video and reach out and like that we can help them as well. Well, and even Either if you're comfort not going, wise or or just even like helping find out what might may be wrong with them as well. Well, so. and just not even that, like, because life is really hard, and I yeah. I thought I'd been through a lot of hard things in my life and like losing my dad at such a young age and you know a lot of other things and I'm realizing now like life's fragile and just life's... my person like nothing compares to the pain of considering losing your person and it's been a lot, it's been um, a lot. and we both I think we're at different parts in the journey actually we're not I don't feel like we're on the same page yeah. but I feel like the one thing we're doing really good is just like we have a very good perspective right now and I feel like our love has been deepened and strengthened oh, yeah. in a way that I didn't know could happen yeah. um, I also feel like literally like my perspective on life is just forever changed it is so much you guys yeah. and we are navigating through it there's Blindly. times, like when he left today, I just shut the door and I just started crying when you went to go get your COVID test. Because yeah. I was so anxious about being away from you. Like, there's been a couple days, I mean, this is why we haven't recorded. Like, there's one day I just cleaned the bathroom while he was in the shower and cleaned his office while he was working. Like, it kept me away from him. Like, I just always wanted to be touching him. Like, I, Which I don't hate. went and weeded. And I weeded the garden right by my office. outside of his That's office window because I was like, then I can like watch in on him. <laughs> like You're so cute. Yeah, but it's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it is right now. Like, there's there's a lot that we're experiencing going through and and I don't know how to do it gracefully. And there's times where I just like the first couple days I just cried in my closet. Because I didn't want him to know. And then he's like, do you not love me? Like, you're a highly emotional person. Why are you not crying, right? I could tell you were trying to be really strong. And then now I just cry all of the times. Yeah, and that's not helpful just either. A baby, really. It's a lot. But you know what? This isn't a, this isn't about me. I'm not trying to make this about me or anything. No, no. I'm just telling you, like, we've been bad. MIA. It's been a lot. It's been a lot, guys. Um, we felt it was appropriate to catch you up, and I want to remember where I'm at. Plus, I'm just when my friends ask me what's going on, I'm just gonna send them this video. And say, <laughs> I cannot tell the story one more time. To be, I've never, ever, losing my dad. All the trials I've been through have not wanted to talk to people, yeah, yeah. and I just couldn't. Like, literally, could not even for my mom. I, yeah. I couldn't answer the phone. I could not muster the strength to like pretend that like. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, like, I, I couldn't pretend. Yeah. I couldn't answer the phone. I I just have needed to, like, my prayers, like, I've never prayed so much and yet said so little. I just, like, kneel down and I just open the prayer and just cry. 
and then close the prayer and hope that there was something coherent in there. Like, I just, I don't even know. Like, it just, wow, this is real life. It happens. It happens. The biggest thing is that we can just <coughs> live life to its fullest and remain, remain optimistic, okay. right? Remain optimistic and do service and really just bring joy to the world. Because you only get one life, you only get one shot, one opportunity. I had two days that I couldn't even function and then I realized I went on a walk and I finally called my little brother and I was talking to him and I realized that this has changed my life and I don't know if I'm going to have one year left with JD or 60 years. But what I do refuse to do is waste any more of it moving forward and I've never been the kind of person that's like, well I have been, I tried with my dad when he was in the hospital like seven days before he died. I was like, I'm just going to choose faith no matter what, I'm just choosing faith put my head down and just bearing through and that didn't work out the way I wanted, right? And that my faith has carried me through that and I'm not saying anything bad about faith or those that are able to do that, but in this moment I realized like how intertwined faith and happiness are. And that it might be easier instead of saying like, I'm gonna choose faith because my mind's like, that didn't work out for you last time. Instead of saying that, I'm saying I'm choosing happiness and those two are intertwined. And by choosing happiness, I'm living every moment with you, right? Like Which even when I'm faith. Right. And even when I'm crying in your arms, I'm like I am fully embracing this moment of him being able to hold me of what it feels like and what you smell like and oh this is I the worst. so good, guys. He does. I he really does. So I'm just saying um, <clears throat> that I am moving forward choosing happiness. That is my thing. Like, I'm not going to waste the time I do have with you. And I pray more than anything that that is still so many more years. It is. It's, it's many more years. We're gonna get through this. Everything's gonna fi be fine. And yeah, I can't do this do anymore this. tonight. So, I'm sorry. Thank you guys for watching. We will certainly keep you updated. Yeah, we'll and have to do like a Q and A. Let we'll, us know what we'll questions do, you we'll have. Do more. And we'll definitely be better about updating. And like, I think we're we're doing much better than we were a couple days ago uh, or a week ago. And yeah, so subscribe if you haven't. Follow our journey because it's going to be a bumpy one. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.